myself dr p pramod kumar associate professor of department of mechanical engineering mlr institute of technology in this class we are going to study elongation of bars of variable cross section in our previous class we have seen elongation of a uniform bar a bar of uniform cross section that means the diameter of the bar is not changing it is uniform throughout now in this class uh, we will see the expression for elongation of bars of variable cross section under this header first we will check a stepped bar elongation of a stepped bar then elongation of a tapered circular rod before uh, going to the elongation of a stepped bar or uh, uniformly tapering rod uh, let us revise uh, the previous concept stress if a body or a member is subjected to load the body will deform if it is a tensile load the body will get elongated or if it is a compressive load the body will shorten it will contract the elongation and contraction of the body due to the application of external load on it is called deformation the deformation per unit length of the body is known as strain the deformation measured or the change in length divided by its original length is called strain the load applied is equal to the resistance offered by the body against deformation the resistance per unit area the resistance offered by the body per unit area is known as stress which is denoted by symbol sigma the strain is denoted by symbol epsilon in general stress has units newtons per mm square and strain has no units now we will check the elongation of a non uniform bar that is bar which is a tapered over a length l changing its diameter from maximum to minimum over a length l and another one is a stepped bar where the diameter abruptly uh, changes decreases or increases so first we will see elongation of a stepper bar here so the figure shows a stepper bar consisting of three portions so the first portion um second portion middle portion is uh, having less diameter than other two portions and the third one is having larger uh, diameter which is subjected to an axial tensile force as shown in figure this stepper bar is consisting of uh, three uniform bars it is uh, made up of joining three uniform bars at uh, back to back or end to end so this is what first uniform bar and another uniform bar and last one three uniform bars finding the elongation of stepper bar we will consider the stepper bar into three parts uh, of uniform bars so each uh, uniform bar in the stepper bar is having its own uniform diameter and length so here the first portion is having diameter d1 second portion is having diameter d2 and the third portion is having diameter d3 
Now, the lengths are L1, L2 and L3. The three portions are having a lengths L1, L2 and L3. Now, the total load acting on the bar is equal to P and load carried by each uniform bar in the stepper bar or each portion is equal to P. Now, these bars are made up of different materials. The first bar is made up of a material which is having Young's modulus E1 and the second bar is having Young's modulus E2 and the third bar is having Young's modulus E3. These three bars are made up of different materials so that is why they possess different Young's moduli. Now, concentrate on the first part. Consider it as a uniform bar of diameter D1 and length L1, Young's modulus E1. So, load applied on the first bar is P1 and length is L1, diameter is D1. Now, the area of cross section of the first bar is A1 which is equal to pi by 4 D1 square. Young's modulus of the bar is given as E1. Now, apply change in length formula to the first bar. We already know the change in length formula for uniform bar that is delta L is equal to P L by A E. Now, uh, applying that formula to this uh, first part, we will get uh, change in length of the first part or first bar or first portion is given by delta L1 is equal to P1 L1 A1 E1 P L1 a1 e1 because the load acting on the three portions of the bar is same that is why the load is same here p and length is l1 area of cross section of the first bar is a1 and Young's modulus is e1. Now, look at the second portion which is subjected to a load capital P and its length is l2 diameter d2 area of cross section a2 which is equal to pi by 4 d square. Young's modulus of the second portion is E2. It is made up of another material. Change in length of the second portion delta L2 is given by P L2 A2 E2. P is the load applied, L2 is the length of the second portion, A2 is the area of cross section and E2 is the Young's modulus. Now, look at the third portion, elongation of part 3 or uh, section 3. Again, the load applied on the third part is equal to the same load, P, length is equal to L3 and diameter is equal to D3, area of cross section is given by A3 which is equal to pi by 4 into d3 square. Young's modulus of this material is e3. Now, the change in length of the third portion that is the elongation of the third portion due to the tensile load is equal to delta L3 which is given by P L3 A3 E3. The formula for finding change in length of a uniform bar is P L by A E. Here, all the three bars are subjected to the same load P and lengths are varying and uh, diameters are changed and material is also changed. So, delta L1 is the change in length or elongation of the first portion, delta L2 is the change in length or elongation of the second portion and delta L3 is the change in length or elongation of the third portion. Now, the total change in length uh, of the stepper bar due to the application of given load P, tensile load P is sum of individual elongations. Total change in length delta L is given by change in length of first portion, change in length of second portion and change in length of third portion. Delta L is equal to delta L1 plus delta L2 plus delta L3. Now, substitute delta L1 and delta L2, delta L3 from the above equations, the total change in length given by 
this expression change in length of first portion plus change in length of second portion and change in length of uh, third portion. If the material is same, if the stepped bar is made up of same material E1 is equal to E2 is equal to E3 and the equation if it is made up of same material then E1 equal to E2 equal to E3 which is equal to Young's modulus of the material then the equation reduces to PL1 by A1E PL2 by A2E PL3 by A3 E. Now, we can take uh, P by E outside and common which is equal to L1 by A1 plus L2 by A2 plus L3 by A3. Delta L is given by P by E into L1 by A1 plus L2 by A2 plus L3 by A3. If all sections are made up of same diameter, that means uh, the bar is no more stepped bar, it is a bar of uniform diameter D. Then the area of cross section A1, area of cross section A2 and the area of cross section A3, all areas are same. Then A1 equal to A2 equal to A3, the equation reduces to P by A E into L1 plus L2 plus L3. L1 plus L2 plus L3 is equal to total length that is nothing but delta L is equal to P L by A E which is an expression for change in length of a uniform diameter bar. Now, let us look at the elongation of circular tapered rod. A circular tapered rod is a rod whose diameter is gradually decreasing over a length. Now, consider a bar of length L tapering uniformly from diameter D1 to D2. So, diameter D1 is the maximum diameter of the bar and D2 is the minimum diameter of the bar and this change in diameter is occurred over a length of rod L. Now, let the member be subjected to an axial tensile force uh, like this. The member is subjected to axial tensile force. Due to the axial tensile force, uh, the bar will get elongated. Now, we will find an expression for elongation of the circular tapered rod. Now, consider an elemental length of the rod. In this uh, uh, derivation, we will consider a small portion of the rod and we will find the elongation of the small portion and we will integrate that uh, elongation of the small element between the limits 0 to L to get the total elongation of the taper rod. So, now I will consider an elemental length dx of the bar at a distance of x from the larger diameter end. Now, dx is the portion considered because dx is uh, very, very uh, small. The length of dx is very small. That is why I can consider this portion as a, a uniform rod. Instead of tapered rod, I can consider the dx length of the bar is uniform. Now, the diameter at the section considered is d dash. The diameter at the larger end is d1 and the diameter at the smaller end is d2. It happened over a length of L. It is gradually reduced. So, as you move uh, right side from the maximum diameter, the diameter is reducing. At a distance x, uh, the diameter is d dash. Now, find the diameter uh, d dash in terms of uh, d1, d2 and l. The diameter d dash is given by d1 is the diameter and uh, the reduction in the diameter over a length of 
x. The diameter d dash is given by d1 minus change in diameter over a length x. Here, d1 minus d2 by l gives us the rate of change of decrement in the diameter multiplied by uh, distance uh, x so that we will get the total decrement in the diameter and uh, subtracting the change in or reduction in the diameter over a length x uh, will give us the diameter d dash at the section considered. Area of cross section. To find the area of cross section at this portion, we will take, uh, we will assume d1 minus d2 by L is equal to k. We will assign this value d1 minus d2 by L to k, a constant k. Therefore, the equation will reduce to d dash is equal to d1 minus kx, where k representing d1 minus d2 by L. To find the area, I will reduce this equation to d dash is equal to d1 minus kx. Cross sectional area at the section considered x uh, is given by a dash. a dash is the area of the rod at the section considered. At the section considered, the diameter is as d dash. So, pi by 4 d dash square is the area formula. So, I am substituting here d dash is equal to d1 minus kx whole square. Now, stress at the section considered. Stress at the section considered is sigma dash. So, here we are calculating area of the small portion or elemental length we considered and stress acting on the elemental length of the bar. That is why uh, area is denoted by a dash and stress is denoted by sigma dash. We know that stress is given by load by area. The load acting on the element is P and area of cross section is a dash. Substituting a dash in this equation, we will get P by pi by 4 into d1 minus kx whole square. So, now the equation further reduced to 4p into pi d1 minus kx whole square. Strain is given by stress by Young's modulus. We know the formula for Young's modulus. Young's modulus E is equal to stress by strain. Stress by strain. From this equation, we can get strain is equal to stress by Young's modulus. In this equation, strain is given by 4p divided by pi into d1 minus kx whole square and divided by Young's modulus E gives us the strain of the element considered. The strain of the element considered is denoted as epsilon dash. The extension of the elemental length dx, the extension of the elemental length dx is given by delta L dash. Delta L dash is equal to strain into original length. We know that strain is given by change in length by original length. To find change in length, delta L is equal to, we need to multiply strain by original length. So, here delta L dash is the change in length of the elemental length of the bar and epsilon dash is the strain of the small elemental bar and dx is the original length of the elemental uh, bar we considered. So, extension or elongation of the elemental length is given by 4p divided by pi e d1 minus dx d1 minus kx whole square into dx where dx is the original length of the small element considered. Now, this is the extension of the small element 
and this bar is made up of so many elemental uh, lengths starting from 0 to L. So, this bar is consisting of so many portions of same or such kind of uh, elemental lengths. Now, to find the total elongation of the bar, we will integrate this equation that is the extension of the elemental length over limits 0 to L. The total extension of the bar delta L is given by integral 0 to L 4 p pi e d 1 minus k x whole square d x. The integration for this is 4 p by pi e constant we will take it outside from the integration and the integration part is integral 0 to L 1 by d 1 minus k x whole square d x. The integration for this is 4 p by pi e k into 1 divided by d 1 minus k x over the limits 0 to L. Now, apply upper limit and lower limit. The equation simplifies to 4 p pi e k in place of x first I am substituting upper limit L 1 by d 1 minus k L minus if you substitute the lower limit in place of x that is 0 in place of x the equation will reduce to 1 divided by d 1. Now, substitute the k value the k constant k representing here d 1 minus d 2 by L substitute k value back into this equation. So, that we will get delta L is equal to 4 p L divided by pi e into d 1 minus d 2. Actually, k value is equal to d 1 minus d 2 by L that L now move to numerator. Next, 1 divided by d 1 minus k L in place of k substitute d 1 minus d 2 by L. Further simplifying this expression, 4 p L by pi e d 1 minus d 2 into 1 divided by d 1 minus d 1 plus d 2. Here, the L in the denominator are cancelled minus 1 by d 1. Now, the final expression is 4 p L divided by pi e d 1 minus d 2 into 1 minus d 2 minus 1 by d 1. The final expression for change in length after simplifying is 4 p L divided by pi e d 1 minus d 2 into 1 by d 2 minus 1 by d 1. Now, take LCM and further simplify this equation and then the equation will become 4 p L by pi e d 1 minus d 2 into the d 1 minus d 2 is the LCM. So, we will get d 1 minus d 2. So, here d 1 minus d 2 and d 1 minus d 2 gets cancelled and now the expression for change in length of a tapered circular rod of diameter d 1 d 2 is given by 4 p L by pi e d 1 d 2. The expression for change in length of a tapered rod is given by 4 p L divided by pi e d 1 into d 2. d 1 and d 2 are the diameters, L is the length of the tapered rod E is the Young's modulus of the material of the taper rod and P is the load applied. Now, let us uh, revise the concepts learned today. A stepper bar is treated as a stepper bar is treated as two or more bars of 
uniform diameter or uniform bars. Now, to find the elongation of the stepper bar, we will find the elongation of each and individual uniform bars and we will add them. So, change in length of uh, stepper bar is equal to change in length of its uh, sections or portions. And uh, for uniformly tapered circular rod, the change in length delta L is given by 4 P L by pi E T 1 D 2. For example, if both the diameters are same, at both the ends the diameters are same, that means uh, if it is an uniform diameter bar, uniform cross section bar, then diameter D1 is equal to diameter D2 is equal to diameter D, both are of same diameter. Then substituting in this equation 4 P L by pi E D square D1 and D2 both are equal to D, D square. Now, P L by pi by 4 D square into E, pi by 4 D square is the, pi by 4 D square is the area of the rod area of cross section. Therefore, the delta L is equal to P L by A E, which is an expression for finding the change in length of a bar of uniform cross section. With this, we will stop today. In our next class, we will meet you with another concept from strength of materials. Thank you.